Hi, this is Tim and Dole. Welcome to Midwest Hunting and Outdoors by Two Dumbasses. A podcast about the outdoors, hunting, and being a steward of the land. Iowa Missouri Hybrids has been a family-owned business since the 1930s, located in historic Keosauqua, Iowa. Aaron and his team are a one-stop shop for farmers, hunters, and landowners for your conservation program, CRP, food plots, and all planting needs. Give Aaron at IMH a call and tell him the two dumbasses sent you. Established in 1934, Pete and Shorty's is located on Main Street, Clarksville, Iowa. Pete and Shorty's is famous for their half-pound burgers, hand-breaded tenderloins, and homemade pizza. The beer is always cold, and the Bloody Marys are the best in town. Stop in and tell Mike and Amy that the two dumbasses sent you. Welcome to Midwest Hunting and Outdoors by Two Dumbasses, and we are coming to you uh, from Boone Wildlife Research Station um, near Boone, Iowa. And uh, second time we've been in this uh, location, and it's a great location. And these birds, the prairie chickens here in front of us, uh, uh, should be familiar from one of our previous episodes back in July and August. Yeah. Uh, but Tim, um, what do we, what do we, how we want to start our episode today? Well, I think first off, I mean, we got a couple of, a couple of exciting trends. I mean, we, we've, we've had a large increase in number of subscribers. We've also. Uh, We've also gotten some sponsors that have come on, but first I want to go back to the, our subscribers. Uh, first, thank you for subscribing to our channel and providing that level of support. Uh, we, we build these episodes for, for you, and uh, if this is your first time uh, watching one of our shows, thank you for tuning in, and uh, if you like the, like the content and what we're doing, if you hover on our video on the lower right corner, uh, click subscribe and we'd sure appreciate it. We have two new sponsors. Uh, one is IMH, Iowa Missouri Hybrids. And uh, so give, give Aaron a call at uh, IMH. Anything associated to food plots and seed or questions associated to plants, this guy's the man. And uh, we've, we've been using uh, IMH for uh, many years now and I'm completely satisfied. He's got some great products. And uh, we just encourage you to reach out to, to Aaron and uh, get all your food plot questions answered. Yeah. The, other, uh, the other sponsor is uh, Pete and Shorty's in Clarksville, Iowa. So if you you've want the best burger around, a good Bloody Mary, a cold beer, or a hot uh, cup of coffee, uh, Pete and Shorty's Clarksville, Iowa is where you want to be. Excellent. And with that... Let me introduce uh, Tyler Harms. Tyler, tell us a little bit about yourself, and then ultimately we're going to talk about hunting surveys. Yeah, absolutely, guys. So uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, I'm the biometrician and deer program leader for the Iowa Department of Natural Resources. So uh, I know we've talked a little bit about this before, but as a biometrician, I'm kind of the wildlife math guy uh, for the DNR. So I um, I do a lot of number crunching, uh, primarily for white-tailed deer, but also provide technical guidance to our research staff um, in the Wildlife Bureau on research design, statistics, survey design, those sorts of things, including hunting surveys. Uh, and then as the deer program leader, I essentially just help manage our, our white-tailed deer program. So anything to do with population management, setting hunting regulations, um, managing our chronic wasting disease and other disease-related responses in, in white-tailed deer and, and also providing guidance to field staff if they request it on habitat and population management for deer. That's awesome. Yeah, and this is home base for you? This is home base for me. Um, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic has changed that a little bit for me, but, but yeah, this is the, the Boone Wildlife Research Station houses most of our wildlife research staff in the state. We also have the Clear Lake Wildlife Research Station, which has our, our wetlands and fur bear waterfowl programs. Uh, we have a research station down in Sheraton, Iowa, that has our forest wildlife program. Yeah, we're actually going to talk to Jim Coffey um, in a future episode on, on wild, uh, wild turkeys. Yeah. Uh, so we'll be in Sheraton and see that, uh, that research center here pretty soon. Yeah. However, that's not what we're talking about today. What we're going to talk about is uh, the Iowa DNR hunting survey. Let's start with, you know, what is that? Let's summarize what it is and, and why it exists. 
Yeah, so we we rely on hunter surveys uh, for a variety of different reasons. You know, for a small game, uh, we send out a postcard survey every year to estimate harvest and the number of hunters that we have. Uh, We do the same thing for um, snow goose harvest every year. This survey in particular was our deer hunter survey. We also send out a deer hunter survey typically every five years. Uh, And the primary reason for that is to essentially just gauge uh, attitudes and opinions of of the deer population and deer hunting in general from our hunters. Uh, This survey that was just recently sent out that we're going to talk about a little bit today um, had some specific goals in mind. Uh, The first of which is that we're partnering with a graduate student from the University of Colorado who's really interested in looking at um, wounding rates among different methods of take for white-tailed deer. Uh, There was a study published in the early 80s that that looked at wounding rates in Iowa, uh, white-tailed deer wounding rates in Iowa across different different weapons types. And and Devin, the graduate student, has a has a strong interest. He's a big deer hunter and is just curious about this and wanted to repeat that effort to see how they compare now to to what they were then. Sure. Also really important information for us because in our deer population model, which is used to to mm-hmm. plot trends in deer populations through time, we actually account for wounding rates in that model. So so this survey will not only satisfy Devon's objectives of looking at how things compare through time, but also allow us to potentially update what that rate might be in our population model, get us a little bit more uh, accuracy in our in our population trend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, off the top of your head, you don't know what that... Right now, we assume about 10% in the model. Um, we'll see what the survey tells us in terms of, of um, what that is what that is now. Well, I've seen some of these folks shoot. I, that seems, <laughs> it seems a little low. <laughs> I'm might glad be. you made it general <laughs> and not directly at me, Jim, uh, 10%. Uh, of the 10%, does that assume that that 10% is then ultimately going to dis- be deceased, um, that they're, they're going to die? Yeah. So it's 10% wounded and dying. Yep. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yep. And that's, you know, probably not always the case, but... but yeah. Yeah, we've definitely, I've, I'm sure you guys have seen it. I've certainly seen some deer that I look, you know, you harvest them and then you look at them after the fact and you, you kind of start counting the holes and you're like, holy smokes, this is a tough deer, man. We got a good, a good buddy of ours, won't mention his name. Uh, we were out west hunting mule deer and uh, shooting a, a pretty good caliber sized rifle and, uh, Anyway, I think he ended up reloading his rifle three times on this one animal. And the guide finally says to him, you know, he goes, hey, keep on firing. He goes, he goes, as long as there's lead in the air, there's hope. <laughs> he did end up uh, securing that animal. That was a lot of hope. There's not a lot of animal left, right? So, yeah. <laughs> There's more to that story, obviously, oh, right? Oh, my but, God. Uh, he said, he goes, you know, you got the wrong kind of gun. You need one of those guns with a handle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can tell you guys a story about uh, my first shotgun deer hunting experience as a, as a young lad, but maybe we save that for another day. <laughs> Sounds All right. good. All right. Let's go back to the survey. Yeah. So um, this year's specific survey, I think what I recall when I took it was fairly short. Five, five questions, maybe? Yeah, I think maybe between five and ten questions. I can't remember exactly how many. And, you know, that's our goal, right? I mean, you, your time, listener's time is very valuable to us. We want to try to get the, the information that we need as efficiently as possible from, from, from you all. And really appreciate folks taking that survey because it is very valuable information for us. Uh, you know, one of the other goals of the survey is, uh, and we talked a little bit about this in the, in the harvest summary episode is that you know we always look at summarizing deer harvest every year and we use the number of licenses or the number of hunters to kind of standardize that so if we see an increase in license sales and number of hunters we might expect to see an increase in harvest so we kind of look at those two trends together Uh, what this survey is going to do for us is it's also tracking effort so it asks how many days did you spend in the field So you buy an archery license, Joel, or you buy an archery license, Tim, and I buy an archery license, chances are we're probably all three not going to spend the same number of days in the field, right? So Mm -hmm. when when I look at that archery license, I assume 
you know, X number of days in the field, but really there's going to be variability. And so this survey is going to hopefully help us kind of shed some light on, on what that variability actually is. Interesting. Now, I know I received mine on my email. Um, is that the only media that was sent out on? For this survey, it was, okay. yeah. And those yeah. email addresses, or how do, how do you get those? So those are provided by, um, by you all. Uh, voluntarily voluntarily yep yeah. um, it's either through uh, signing up for our our various DNR newsletters uh, on the website uh, you can also if if when you purchase a license at a license vendor they may ask you if you want to provide an email address we get it that way also um, and then you know new as of a few years ago we have this this go outdoors Iowa app yeah. the, your ability to purchase your licenses online purchase your tags online that requires an email address to do so. Uh -huh. um, and, and what we've seen is that a lot of people are going with that option for purchasing purchasing their licenses. And and for us, um, you know, having an email address is awesome uh, because typically how we've operated in the past is we'll send a paper survey out via mail, postcard survey. Uh, depending on how many postcards we send out and how big the postcard is, that's a pretty significant expense. Sure, you know, sure. We're looking at... Fifteen to twenty thousand dollars just to mail the survey, and that doesn't include the processing time on the back end to get the data entered and, and cleaned up and all that stuff. Online survey, this deer hunter survey, send it out to fifty thousand people, costs us nothing, right? Essentially. Yeah, I I think I got three three of them in my different emails. I, I did all of them. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. I'm just kidding. I'm just teasing. Send it to all your friends, too, right? <laughs> hey, how should I answer this one, right? But, uh, yeah, because that's where I was kind of going with this is I'm sure someone has brought up the idea or talked about it as far as down in the future putting this actually in the app. Yeah. Uh, what a great concept, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. Any What additional goals um, for the survey? Well, you know, we... I've, I've talked about a couple already. Uh, there, you may have noticed there were a couple questions on there asking about how you process your deer, how you dispose of your carcass. Mm -hmm. uh, those are two really important questions that will provide some good information for us on chronic wasting disease management. So a couple of things that, um, you know, that we're curious about, how, you, how do you process your deer? Do you process it yourself? Do you take it to a locker? That kind of helps us learn you know, how many deer are getting processed at home, how many deer are getting processed at a locker, and, and helps us kind of gauge how we might need to, to allocate education efforts on, on testing and, 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 and things related to that disease and, and consumption of, of venison. And then the carcass disposal questions, are, are, that's a really important one because like we've we talked about on, on previous episodes, chronic wasting disease, the infectious material can persist in the environment. Once an animal is infected, that infectious material spreads throughout the entire body. So if you harvested an animal and it was positive, and you pitch that carcass out on the back 40, if another deer comes around and starts nosing around in that, the, those carcass remains, it can become infected if, that, if the harvested deer was infected. And so we're, we're trying to learn more about how many you know, how many carcasses are being disposed via a landfill or some sort of other waste avenue uh, versus just left on the landscape or, you know, any other ways in which people are, are disposing their carcasses. And what are you finding on, from that survey? Well, the data are still coming in. Um, I haven't gotten, gotten the final data yet, but right now we're looking at about 15,000 responses, which is just amazing to me. Uh, so kudos to... To you guys and to all the listeners that helped us out with that survey, I'm, I'm really looking forward to um, diving into the data to see what it tells us. So we've got about a month left of the survey. We're going to give till about mid-March, so actually a couple weeks now, um, for folks to fill it out. You'll probably hear from me at least a couple more times. If you haven't filled it out, I'm going to keep hounding you until you do. But it is a voluntary survey. Your responses are kept confidential, so just keep that in mind. Okay. Excellent. Do you anticipate, so you mentioned um, the, the state of Iowa typically does one every five years for mm -hmm. um, what deer, a deer survey? Yep. When's the next uh, deer survey? It's hard to say. I mean, right now we could say it might be in another five years, uh, but there are some, some times where we will uh, develop surveys for s specific purposes. So for example, last year we sent out a survey 
uh, just to folks in northeast Iowa to try to look at how familiar they are with chronic wasting disease because that's the area of the state where we have the disease the most. Uh, so how familiar are they with the disease? How do they get their information related to the disease? Again, information to help us kind of direct effort towards different education and outreach efforts related sure. to white-tailed deer and chronic wasting disease. Excellent. Excellent. Tim, any questions on the... I don't. I would, do I would just say, hey, that the survey only takes three minutes. Yeah. It's very slick. It is, I think, literally five questions, right? Do you I correct think me it, if I'm wrong? I think it's seven questions. Seven questions. Yeah. Five is close enough. In today's... <laughs> <laughs> My math, seven and five are the same. When you get to my right? age, plus or Tyler, minus. is that what you're saying? When no, you get to my age, five and seven. Those plus are or minus prime two, and odd minus. numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, thanks for having fun with us, but is there any other um, you know, high points on this topic that you want to cover that we haven't so far? I don't think so. I mean, uh, you know, like you guys said, if you can help us out, take a few minutes, fill out the survey. Uh, you're not only helping helping me out, but uh, you know we're partnering with the graduate student as well. So training training our future wildlife professionals, which is really important. Yeah, how cool is that? Yeah, very yeah. cool. All right. Well, we will close this episode, like all episodes, with be safe, be safe, have, have fun, fun, and, and get, get outdoors. outdoors. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening or watching our show. We have some exciting topics and guests coming up. We ask that you subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We look forward to hearing your suggestions for topics, questions, and comments. This is Two Dumbasses signing off. Until next time, be, be safe, safe, have, have fun, fun, and, and get, get outdoors. outdoors.